my pleasure to introduce you, ladies and gentlemen, to Mr. Nestor Gomez. A couple of weeks ago, I spent days watching the news. I kept watching the reports about the situation at the Mexican-USA border and the inexcusable treatment by this administration of immigrant children. Immigrant children, some of them babies, as they were being ripped away from their parents' arms only to be put in detention and kept in cages. Thanks to the effort of many organizations that organized thousands of people to march on the streets to the chance of families belong together. And thanks to the outcry of millions of concerned citizens, the situation in the border evolved in such a way that some of the children, only a few of them, have been reunited with the parents. So I'm watching the news, and I'm watching a video clip on one of one of these reunions. I'm watching as the mother, trembling and crying, sees across the room the figure of her small boy, whom she has not seen in days. She sees her son. She runs across the room, and she gets down on her knees. And she hugs her son. And she hugs him in such a way as if to make sure that no one will ever separate them again. Lo siento, lo siento, te amo mucho, lo siento, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I love you so much, she tells her son. But her son, doesn't reply. Her son doesn't even look at her. And her son doesn't hug her back. And I wonder, maybe he's too traumatized? Or maybe he's mad at her? Maybe he blames her for everything that happened to them so far? And I think this way. Because for a long time, that's the way I felt about my mother. You see, no kid ever grows up wanting to be an immigrant or a refugee. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a lawyer, a teacher, or a journalist. Back then, I was living in Guatemala with my parents. And I was only 10 years old but my mother used to send me to the market to buy fabrics for her sewing business. She couldn't afford to send my father because he had a drinking problem. So she would send me to the market to buy everything. But one day my mother came with me and I was so happy talking to my mother about my plans to be a journalist or a reporter or a lawyer that I didn't pay attention. And the bag that I was carrying under my arms was suddenly taken away by somebody. So I turned around and I saw that thief running that deep into the market. And I took off running after the thief. Suddenly I heard my mother scream, stop! I stopped running and the thief got away. A couple of months later, my parents immigrated to the United States, leaving me and my siblings in the care of our grandparents. It wasn't until years later, when I was almost 15 years old, that they sent to us and we came to this country undocumented. And at first I was happy to be reunited with my mother, but like many other immigrants, I soon had to face the hardship of having to get used to a life and a country with a language and a culture I knew nothing of. I felt strange and alone. And I started to feel angry at my mother for having taken me away from everyone and everything 
I knew until then. I started going to high school, and on my senior year of high school, I told my mother that I was studying really hard because I wanted to go to the university to become a teacher, a journalist, or a lawyer. Um, you know that we don't have any money to send you to the university because we're always broke, my mother said. Fine, I told my mother. I'm studying really hard. I'm going to get a scholarship. Um, you know that we're undocumented, and you cannot get a scholarship. After graduation, I told my mother since I couldn't go to the university, I was going to get married to my high school with her. Um, you know that you cannot get married because that's going to delay your immigration procedures. Stop ruining my life. I told my mother really upset. And since I was so upset at my mother, I decided that I was going to get married anyway. So I defied my mother and I got married anyway. Plus, my girlfriend was pregnant. <laughs> so we kind of had to get married. And after getting married, I soon realized that getting a good paying job without proper working documents was going to be really difficult. So I ended up working at a fast food restaurant. One night at the restaurant, some kids were making a lot of noise in the dining room. So I approached the kids and I asked them to be quiet. I don't know if they were drunk, high, or just acting stupid. But as I asked them to be quiet, one of the kids reached over the counter and punched me in the face. A few seconds later, I found myself jumping over the counter, running to catch the kid. I had a knife in my hand. The kid stood by the door, and for a moment, I knew that if the kid and I got into a fight, I was going to use the knife, and one of us was going to get hurt. But at the last moment, his friends took him away. After the kid left, I found myself real upset. But not only upset at the kid that had punched me in the face, but I also upset at my current situation. And again, I found myself blaming my mother for everything. I blame my mother for bringing me to this country and documented. I blame my mother for pulling me away from the opportunity to get an education in Guatemala. And I even blame my mother for having to work a shitty job. And I wonder, maybe I would have been better off just staying in Guatemala. Now, while I was busy building resentment against my mother, she had been busy working three or four jobs to save enough money for a multiple immigration procedures and applications and fines. She had come to this country right in time to apply for an immigration amnesty of the early 80s, and she had gotten a green card. And from that moment, she had tried to apply for a green card for me and my siblings so we could get our papers straight. In one occasion, after my immigration process was denied because I had gotten married, My mother gave me an application that I was supposed to fill up. But I was so upset that I took the application and I threw it in the garbage can and I stomped out of her house angrily. After I left, my mother went into the garbage can, fished up the application, filled it up, enclosed a check, and sent it to immigration. I would have never never had been able to get a green card without my, mother's, without my mother's help. And even after me and my brothers got our green cards, she kept reminding us to always walk a straight path and don't commit any crimes. Because committing any crimes could mean a denial of citizenship or even a deportation. It wasn't until March of this year more than 30 years after I came to this country that I finally became a USA citizen. So the first thing that I did as I became a USA citizen right after I signed up to be a registered voter was to call my mom to give her the good news and to thank her for all her sacrifices and hard work. 
I also wanted to ask something to my mother that had been on my mind for a long time. Mom, I asked her, when was the moment that you decided that we needed to leave Guatemala and come to the USA? Do you remember the day at the market when I asked you to stop running as you ran to try to catch the kid, the thief that has stolen the fabrics? Do you know why I asked you to stop running? Because you probably thought that I couldn't catch him? No, my mother replied. Because I knew that you could catch him. And I knew that he probably had some friends that were going to hurt you, or even worse. That day at the market, I knew that if we didn't leave Guatemala, I was going to have to keep sending you, or maybe your younger brothers to the market alone. And one of these days, one of you guys was going to get hurt. In that moment, I understood completely what my mother was talking about. You see, back then, Guatemala was in the middle of a civil war. Violence and crime were rampant. A lot of businesses were closing. Even if I had been able to get an education, I would have been in trouble. In fact, any of my green professions were going to get me in trouble with the Guatemalan government. Teachers and lawyers that were trying to educate the population about the laws that were meant to protect them were being put in jail because the government claimed that they were communists and they were trying to incite the population against them. Lawyers that tried to defend the population and inform them of the crimes together with the reporters that were trying to inform the population of the crimes committed by those in charge were threatened with jail. So if I had gotten in trouble with the Guatemalan government and I had tried to fight them off with a degree, the Guatemalan government wasn't going to just walk away and let me be. No, they were going to make me disappear like they make thousands of people disappear throughout the years. At the moment, I understood why we had left Guatemala. And I apologize to my mother for all those years that I built resentment against her. I'm sorry, mom, I say. I'm sorry that for so long, I didn't appreciate your effort. And I didn't thank you for all your hard work and for everything you've done for me and my brothers and my sister. We hug and we cry. That was a few months ago. But a couple of weeks ago, as I was watching the video of the mother being reunited with her kid, I couldn't help but think about my own immigration experience. And I began to wonder, what if me, what if I and my siblings have not been able to cross the country the border the way that we did, and we have been caught at the border by ice and put away in cages. Or what if I had stayed in Guatemala and then I had been forced to leave the country with my own kids, only to be caught at the border, I have them ripped away from my arms. Will my kids refuse to talk to me as we were being reunited? I'm wondering about all of this and I'm watching the video clip. And I'm thinking that maybe that's why the kid is so upset at his mother. Maybe he's blaming her for everything that happened so far. But then I see, I see that the kid is no longer looking away. The kid is looking at his mother. And his little arms, his little arms are moving to embrace her. This young, beautiful kid has managed to learn in only a few minutes what it took me years to understand, that this was not his mother's fault, that it wasn't his mother's fault that they had to leave the country, and that they, all the pains and struggles that they went through are not her fault. She is trying to provide him with a chance at life, freedom, and the pursuit of happiness. And as they hug, they cry. And as they cry, I cry. I cry. I cry out for justice. 
I cry tears of anger. But this, this is no longer the misguided anger of my youth, no. This is anger with a purpose, to fight for those immigrant children the same way that my mother fought for me, and to use that anger to march, to protest, and to help people understand the children, children do not belong in cages and families. <laughs> families belong together. <laughs> Mr. Gomez. <laughs>